Yes. Hi, my name is Beth Hiley here for Board Game Geek at Essen 2011, and I am sitting with. And it's Sunday, and I just forgot your name. Hi, I'm Brian. Hi, Brian. It's nice to meet you, Beth. Nice to meet you too. Sorry about that. And I'm sitting here also with the very impressive Star Trek Fleet Captain's Big Box. Do 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 do. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, I promised Aldi I would sing a little bit, so. And we're also saying how perfectly this worked out that I'm a huge Trekkie and I'm very excited I got to do this interview. Oh, that's just sexy. <laughs> I got to make a Doctor Who reference the last interview I'm on the roll. Yes. So. Nice. Um, but we're really looking forward to seeing some of the intricacies of this game and the models, which are exceptional. Indeed. So I'm going to let you take it away with the yeah. captains. So, <clears throat> sorry for my voice, everyone. I've been demoing quite a bit. Uh, we have a basic board setup. You actually have enough tokens to do any size board in any configuration that the two players can agree to. I've already set it up and dealt it out. And you know what you can do if your voice is a little rough? We can always turn up your mic so you don't have to project quite I as much. That. No problem. So, it can be very intimate uh, excellent. demo. I will even whisper, perhaps. And one side plays the Federation, and one side plays the, the Klingons, and it's either two-player or four-player with teams of two in the four-player scenario. Right. And so uh, this is a two-player setup, and again, it could be any size, and you shuffle up the location deck, and you put out the cards onto the table. Uh, from one to do that, you start flipping over your cards such that, oh, I have the U.S. Venture, and we're going to play up to a size 10 game. And how do I know what size it is? It's in the upper right-hand corner, size 5. Oh, I love uh, that they look like this play. Yes, and then, oh, the U.S. Voyager. Oh, the Sutherland, well, since we're playing a 10-point game, that's 8 plus 4 is over 10. So I'm going to go, oh, the USS Reliant. Oh. Well, I just so happen to have these out and about, so we find the Voyager, <laughs> the Reliant, and the Venture, which looks a lot like the Enterprise from the series, but is actually its sister ship. One of the key parts of the Heroclix dial and the overall game mechanic is on any given card, it shows you what it can do. White is undamaged and you choose on the dial any setting within the undamaged area, and you have weapons, sensors, engines, and shields. So all powers to weapons, all powers to engines, you choose what setting you want, and you can click it on the dial itself. It's probably not gonna come up on the camera, yeah, it's but I can choose any one, yeah, underneath the saucer. And then when you take damage, you go to yellow alert, and when you take damage again, you go to red, and then one more, you're destroyed. Bigger ships are better. Additionally, at the very right of this card, you have the missions that are assigned to the ship by Federation Command. So I have four science, one influence, and no combat. Two science, one influence, no combat, and two science. So that's four, five, six, seven, eight. So now I go over to my science deck, shuffle it up, and give myself eight missions. Oh, and again, my favorite finish on cards is that nice yeah, it has a matte finish. finish. Yeah. And then I have two influence missions. Now, any given game, I might have more combat or more influence. Mm -hmm. The Klingons actually have more combat than the Federation does. That's their That's... way, doesn't it? And I have no combat. I then take these and shuffle them up, and I deal off three, and that becomes my first mission. Ah, mission one, two, and three. And they're very, they vary from going and beaming on a away team on one of their planets and beaming them back up to exploring a star to destroying someone, the opponent's ship. Either way, it's, it, it's got a lot of variance and fun. And so I do the same thing for the Klingons. And it just so happens I have a perfect 10 points. How lucky for me. <laughs> and so then I take those ships and I start in my command post. And the Federation starts in their command post. And I pick up my ships, and I set my command cards ah. where I can see them, for easy reference. Additionally, while I don't have all 10 subdecks for each side set up, <clears throat> a Federation has 100 cards. The Klingons have 100 cards. Each, there's 10 decks of 10 cards. Mm -hmm. Once I have my ships, and I know the kinds of missions before they're revealed, I choose four of those 10 decks some of them are combat, science, trickery, etc. And I form my command deck. I then shuffle it and I draw four cards. So you're specializing it already. It's kind of like a mini deck building at the very beginning. Mm -hmm. What am I going to do in this? And my opponent does the exact same things. I'm going to move along a little bit and say, oh, wow, I just happen to have Montgomery Scott. I'm going to assign him to the USS Voyager. I have Catherine Janeway. I'm also going to assign her to the USS Voyager. You can have one captain 
one engineer, one specialist, uh, and one officer. And that is, so you can have four crew on any given ship. Mm -hmm. And then I replenish my cards. And these are helpful in combat. The Klingons would do the same thing. I'm not just gonna go to one side and kind of play yeah. the one side. Now I can take, I get three actions in the basic game. You could have larger games, you could have bigger maps, but the basic game is three actions. Those actions are very valuable. Those are what you can go to a, a location and influence or build star bases or repair your ship and scan a location. But I'm, I'm like James T. Kirk, I wanna boldly go forward. And so I'm just going to move my ship forward and the Voyager has engines of 10, which is also on the card. Right. And this is a size three location. So I go in there and it's a planet. Oh, that's useful. Maybe I'll put yeah. an outpost or, or uh, uh, so eventually build up to uh, uh, a star base. And I roll my dice. I have a two. I didn't even have to do that. I come up <laughs> with an encounter. At the bottom, oh, one it two. shows you when you have an encounter. There are 50 encounter cards. At most you're gonna get is like five, maybe six in any given game. And it really feels like a season of Star Trek and it, how this interacts with what you've done really crystallizes that particular game. I'm gonna see what this is. It's Tribbles. I found Tribbles with Captain Kirk. What happens is now Voyager is infested with Tribbles and I have to deactivate two systems on the ship until I can get back to Starbase and either get rid of them or beam them onto the Klingons so that they are now invested with Tribbles, deactivating two of theirs. And just going through another couple examples of encounters, the mirror universe. I have to exchange my hand with my opponent. So now, <laughs> even though I had this great plan, now I might end up with a bunch of combat cards. And beards. And yes, yeah, so you have to get, get a goatee uh -huh. if yeah. you have one or not. Uh -huh. And so there's just a lot of flavor, including like Ferengi traders. If you roll the dice, you get bonuses. Otherwise, they steal your stuff. So there's, there's just a lot of Star Trek in this game. Additionally, you're looking at, uh, if I go back to my command deck, you have a lot of different tricks and, and combat differences or, or going in and, and scanning, etc. As I move forward, <clears throat> excuse me again for my voice, you can reveal things so I can move in. Now, since I had an encounter on this card, I had to stop for this turn. But otherwise, if I could continue forward, I'm gonna say I didn't get an encounter there, I have additional movement. And on this, I have a setting of nine, and this is size four, so I know I can ah. keep going. Oh, that's an eight. I can keep going. keep going. Now, some cards are at, and I would keep rolling for encounters. Some cards are a nine. So it's very interesting, even though you have a setup, some regions of space may be really big proportionally, even though they're the same size on the board. And some might be, you might get this conduit that's really easy to get across mm. the board. And so every game allows for a different tableau of what you can do and where you can move. Which is possibly true in in a real space, real it's space, uh, yes. bending a space and black holes, etc. Yes. So as I keep going, I, I can keep going. Oh yeah, empty space. Empty yes, space. Very... And it's easy to get across. Exactly. Um, and then the other side takes their turns. Diving into it a little bit, the goal of the game in the base game is to get 10 victory points. You're going to get about eight of them from your missions. And you can cycle your missions by saying, that one is too difficult. I'm just going to cycle out and get a new one. If you run out of the ones that Federation Command assigns you, you can then pick one of the remaining random off the top of the deck and go after that one. And then the other two are going to be either killing the other person's ships for one or building a star base for one victory point. And some cards also allow you to get victory points as well. So there's a lot of different ways to win. Is it heavy combat? Well, the Klingons have more combat. The Federation with this setup had more exploration. Right. And sometimes the Klingons will also have exploration. And the three different mission types are influence, combat, and science. Science is, oh, I have a planet, maybe I have to scan it, roll some dice, play some cards to win, and then I get to count that as a victory point. You know, I'm just looking at some of these missions. Uh, your ships have explored three adjacent locations, have at least three encounter cards in your victory pile, um, things involving an away team. So. Indeed. And then we have this whole bag of tokens, which add a lot of uh, the, the, the aspects of how to complete missions. For instance, I have to spend an action to put in a control token on this area. And if it's habitable, I can put in control tokens. If not, I can't, unless a random encounter allows for it. So uh, I will put it on here, and I would need three to be able to upgrade to a star base. And each one of those requires an action. As I put in outposts and colonies and star bases, they have eventually the star base is 
30 shields. They're really hard to destroy. The other opponent, though, might have a mission, so it makes it, hey, let me go in there and destroy that. I can also repair my ships at that location, so I, if I'm really trying to do combat, it's a nice place to go repair my ships and then go back after them. Without having to come all, all the, the way, way back. back. Because that takes time unless you have the conduit. There's even something, there's two cards that are a stable wormhole, and you can preset it so that there's one in the middle, and then you have another region of space where there's another six to uh, tiles where you go over and get there. Right. So there's a lot of different aspects of what the map does for you. Um, I know I'm forgetting things. Oh, combat. <laughs> Combat's very important. Yeah, let's, let's probably do a little review of combat, and then, uh, then we'll do a moment just to take a look at some of these minis, too. We'll Indeed. do a little zoom in on those. So I could come in, let's say they've explored and they're nearby. I could come in with one or two or three ships, and I spend an action per ship that I bring into the combat, and then I get to add their weapons. The Federation may have cards that prevent that other ship from coming in or, or otherwise uh, change it, but. Uh, the Klingon side gets to play one card, the Federation side gets to play one card, and then you roll dice and compare. So I could play like plus two to any systems, or I could use some of my crew and literally uh, discard them. Uh, I actually don't have either, either of those crew, but some crew will provide right. a bonus during combat. And then I roll, and if I take damage, then I will click down into yellow alert, or red alert, or sometimes you even do three times all in one combat and the ship is destroyed. But you're not set back too badly because then your reinforcement pools come in. You draw additional cards up to the size of the ship that was destroyed, uh, plus up. one, oh. because the Federation knows you need some help. So they give you a little bit more, but you have to start back at the command post, so you're set back but not too far back. Um, if we want, we can definitely zoom in on some of the minis. Yeah, I was actually going to say, well, I'll, I'll move the yes. locations out of the way here. Did we, did we get all the Federation ones in? No, and actually some of them got broken oh, by people right. in our booth. But, oh, yeah. And which we do good. free replacement, by the way. Uh, well, which is nice. Yes. Yeah. And here's another one. So, uh, they're very detailed. Uh, and actually, uh, this Klingon uh, battle cruiser, some of that detail I don't think has really been done before with all the ridges, etc. Uh, and in general, these are pretty nice minis. Yeah. Oh, yeah. When I saw the, um, oh, help me out on the name, the previous Star Trek title that you guys did. Uh, Star Trek uh, Expeditions. Expeditions, yeah, which had the figure. Yes. Um, which was also. Yes, we really had the movie quality. Enterprise in that one, and then the Klingon from the movie in that one. Right. So. No, this looks fantastic. And you're right, it totally gives you the flavor. I. I I'm sure most of the time the camera was on the board, which is good because I sat here and kept going. <laughs> yeah, which is me too. So. <laughs> so I think anyone who's seen the show more than twice would be like, oh, I remember that. Yeah, I mean, if you kind of go through the deck, you know, even Wesley, I didn't even know he was on the bottom. Oh, Wesley okay. Crusher, you have the Battle Bridge, you have Code 47 oh. where he showed up, and other, you know, just kind of you're a truck fan, you're going to have it. Uh, oh, Prime Bird, when they saw some natives on the planet. In the, I think this is the original series, Dr. McCoy. There's just a lot of good Star Trek lore in this. Yeah. And it covers everything except the latest movie, because that's an alternative timeline. Right. But it ha and granted, we've kind of mixed them all together. You can say that Q is doing a puzzle and throwing everyone in, you know, hither and thither, <laughs> and thus they have to figure it out as they go along and work that, together. That's, that's a, a good excuse for a board game. That and why not? <laughs> why not? And uh, I also want to give a shout out to Mike Elliott and Ethan Pasternak. They are the lead designers. Uh, they really brought a, a beautiful game system in, and it's just been a blast to play and work on. Well, and it's been a blast to have you present it to us. Thank you very that much. Looks fantastic. So very good. Good luck. Rest your voice. And I'm sure we'll see you back in the States. So. I, and I'll literally be doing Warriors next. All right. Well, we'll probably break so we can reset for a second.